Hey YouTube, it's Langster here and this week we're going to be making the Hunter's Ragu slash King Stew. They're basically the exact same dish. The ingredients on screen is only for one of those dishes, but because they're exactly the same one, you can just cook double the amount or just one and call it both like I did. So before I start making it, please as usual subscribe if you haven't already, like this video and comment below as well. Now without delaying it anymore, let's get on to the cooking. First off, to prepare for the side, we're going to cut off just the leaves of the pak choy. Then, we're going to chop a carrot into rough small pieces, and the same with the celery stick. You do not need to worry about cutting these too fine because we're going to be blending them. Next, dice an onion into about roughly 1cm size chunks. Now cut a turnip in half, keep a half for later, and cut the one half into rough chunks. For the other half of the turnip, roughly grate it to form long strips. After doing that, crush, peel, and roughly chop four cloves of garlic. Next, add the rough chunks of carrots, turnips, and celery into a blender. Blend this until it looks a bit like orange mashed potato. And now for the meat, oh boy. First I trimmed off the piece without any fat because the picture shows a lot of fat. For the rest of it, cut it into rough cubes. After cutting up the meat, pour the flour into a big bowl and cover the beef chunks with the flour. Next, roughly chop up the chicken breast. This is for the broth. Now that the preparations are done, heat up some olive oil and put in the beef chunks bit by bit. Do not overload the saucepan. After the beef is browned, remove the beef from the heat. I did this in two batches. In the same saucepan, add a bit more oil and fry the onions until they are golden brown. Add in the garlic, whoops I dropped one, and continue cooking for about two minutes. Add the root vegetable mash and some leftover flour from earlier. Cook for about 3 minutes and add in the red wine. Allow most of the red wine to evaporate leaving behind the really nice flavour and then add in the chicken and the beef bone broth. Give it a good stir and then put in the rosemary and thyme. These are extremely aromatic and will make your kitchen smell really homey. Gently twist the leek and put it in to allow the flavours to seep out. Then place in the tomato paste and stir it all in. Add in the salt and black pepper, some hot water, and then cover and allow it to simmer for about half an hour. After half an hour, put in the beef from earlier and allow it to simmer for another two hours. This is to make sure that the beef is super, super soft and melts in your mouth. After cooking, allow it to cool a bit and use a spoon to take off the excess oil on top. Then remove the beef from the broth and then filter the broth through a really fine sieve to collect a really smooth and rich broth. After collecting the broth, put it back into the saucepan and add in the beef and the pak choy leaves and cook until it's hot and serve immediately. So here's the king stew. I'm not sure what that vegetable in the picture actually is, but the closest thing that I could find to it was the pak choy leaves. So the bayamoth tenderloin in the game is a lot bigger in size than the beef which we have in real life. So obviously it's not gonna look as amazing in real life, but this is the closest we can get to it. And because bayamoth tenderloin is amazingly soft and massive. I chose the beef sirloin steak. So as you saw when I cut it up, it does have that really nice layer of fat on the top, which as you can see in the dish is quite prominent. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this uh, meaty dish. Mm. The meat has been cooked for so long that it's so soft that you can just cut it with a spoon. And the flavour 
is immense. So because griffin breast is there, which in real life is chicken breast, we have this really nice meaty undertone to it when we're making the broth. Mm. So the fat from the beef is so soft and full of flavour and it's rendered nicely so it's not, it's not got that raw kind of taste. Mm. So as you saw earlier, I used the turnip to get the white grated vegetable on top. Now turnip and beef go really well together. So the bone marrow stock, which I bought, is really, really nice. It's got a really nice richness through it. This dish is so meaty. Mm. So the freshness of the vegetable goes really well with this. So because I've put all the root vegetables in a blender and blended it all together, the flavour just comes perfectly through this. Whereas if I put it in big chunks, not, not all the flavour could be taken from the vegetable because the middle of the vegetable would still be untouched by the water. Whereas because it was blended, it was a mush, a paste kind of thing, you put it in the water and the flavour just goes all the way through. And it's really nice, you can taste the carrot in there, the sweetness underlying it. Mm. Mm. Meatiness is so nice. So the turnip has a really nice unique flavour. If you do not do the step in the middle when you cool it down and then take off all the fat on top, this dish will be extremely oily. It will be insanely oily. The amount of oil I took off the top is about this big a bowlful. After you take it off it's still rich but it's not overly rich. So why it's called the king stew, I'm not too sure. Perhaps Noctis and his father used to eat this. So Ignis learns the king stew recipe when you eat the hunter's ragu. Now the hunter's ragu is essentially exactly the same dish, so I did not make it twice. There is so much meat in here. Mm. So again, like the green soup curry, I didn't put too much salt in this, otherwise you wouldn't be able to eat this on its own. You'd have to have bread or spaghetti or rice or something which, you know, something which dilutes the saltiness. But the way it is now is perfect to eat without anything else. So the flavour of the broth is so nice. Oh. And because we put the broth through a filter, and we filtered out all these small pieces of carrot or turnip. It's a really, really luxurious, smooth broth. Mm. Because we put the wine in also, there's a slight underlying flavour of the wine as well, which is really delicious actually. Mm. I personally think these Pak Choi leaves are a really good addition to this actually. It's got a nice bitterness to it and freshness as well so when you eat it it really cuts through all the fattiness of the meat. Mm. So the flavour of the rosemary and the thyme through the whole thing is so lovely. That was nice. So that was really really flavourful. It had so many different kind of flavours. It had sweetness, the umami, the saltiness, a tiny bit of bitterness as well which I like. It's, it was amazing. There's no sourness in here, which was good because I think the sourness wouldn't have had a place in this dish. But we did get that slight umami from the tomato paste as well because cooked tomato, as you will know or already know, has a lot of umami in it. And that was overall a really nice dish. However, I don't think it's as good as the green soup curry. Flavours were very homey, so you'd drink it and you'd imagine a cold winter day, which it is nice on a winter's day, however, not one of my top three. So last week, one of the viewers, Julieta, is that how I say your name? Uh, Julieta, she asked me, or you asked me if you're watching, um, what my name, Langster, was about. Like, why, why, why did I call myself Langster? Well, the story behind that is quite a long one. Long story short, my family lives in a pretty mm, rough area. There's quite a lot of rougher folk there. So I used to go to school on a bus, a free school bus, 
and it would go around our little circle, our little ring of houses and pick up children from various bus stops and then drive all the way to school. So one of my neighbours used to go to school with me and he was a very rough character and he would call me Langster the Gangster. My family called me Lang. So Lang is pronounced as Lung in Chinese, Lang. It has various meanings, so you could go down the cool route and it means wolf which is really cool, and I wish I was called Wolf. So that's why I'm called Langster. So I've always used it as a game in-game name. Langster the Gangster. I'm gonna call you guys my gangsters. <laughs> Langsters gangsters. Right, so thank you for watching this video. I really enjoyed eating that. So next week I'm gonna be making Kenny's recipe fish dish. For those of you who have asked me so much for a sweet, desserty kind of dish, the week after next I will be making the memory lane pastry. So please look forward to that. Subscribe if you haven't already, and like this video, and comment below. Let me know how you feel about everything. Everything. So that's the end of episode 10 of Cooking Final Fantasy 15 Foods. Yay! I hope you really enjoyed again, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.